Hello, I'm Annabelle McGilvray and I'm the Director of Communications with the Institute of International Affairs. I'm here today with the Minister for Development in the Pacific, uh, Senator Conchetta Federanti Wells. Thank you for joining me, Senator. It's my pleasure. Um, the Senator is with us today as part of the Indonesia Australia dialogue taking place in Sydney. Um, and perhaps, uh, Senator, if you could talk to the importance of the Indonesia Australia relationship within the Pacific. Well, of course, uh, Indonesia is not just important uh, for Australia as a very close neighbour, uh, but it's also an important country uh, in its different relationships in the Indo-Pacific area. Uh, it is an important country in ASEAN and of course as a participant in the ASEAN uh, Australia Summit, which we recently uh, uh, had here in Australia. So at different levels our relationship uh, is uh, important. Um, of course, Indonesia has also been a participant uh, as a partnership dialogue of the Pacific Island Forum, uh, which we, uh, Australia, is a member of. So at different levels, a relationship uh, that is important on an economic, on a social, on a political, on a defence level. And this is a very important dialogue because we are looking at the next level of relationship uh, with Indonesia. Uh, this is a, a relationship that I think has seen uh, growth, uh, but it has a lot more potential. And I think the relationship in particular between Prime Minister uh, Turnbull and President Jokowi is a very good indication of the potential as to where this relationship can go. And I guess perhaps what areas is that potential in? So um, where do you see um, particular areas that the relationship can be taken further? Well, it's interesting to look at the breadth of the dialogue today and we are not, we are talking across section. So we're not just talking about what has traditionally been uh, the strong part of our relationship and of course because of the work that we've done together in the security area, in the counter-terrorism area, in the people smuggling area, of course our defence ties and uh, as a wife of a former serving member of the Royal Australian Navy, the military, the defence ties have been very, very strong. But today we're talking about um, the broadening of economic ties, we're talking about the involvement of um, small to medium sized enterprises, we're talking about greater people to people linkages. Having said that, Australia of course has a very strong uh, partnership with uh, Indonesia already, we give $356.9 million in overseas development assistance to Indonesia every year. So that's a very sizeable chunk. It's one of our largest uh, ODA uh, recipients. But of course, as we shift from the recipient donor relationship uh, and move much more into an economic uh, partnership and a much more strategic partnership, clearly that changes. So it gives us scope to look at how we can do things differently in the future. So one of the aspects of that, um, I guess, of those change and that sort of development would be trust. And to this morning there was mention of the fact that the trust differential is a little bit, um, or there is a differential between Indonesia, which has quite strong trust towards Australia, but Australia doesn't necessarily have the same feeling. Australians don't have necessarily the same feeling toward Indonesia. Um, perhaps how could we improve that level of understanding and, and trust? Look, trust is something that grows uh, with people-to-people -people linkages. I'm a strong believer in people-to-people -people linkages and I think that from an Australian perspective it's going to be important that we broaden Australia's understanding uh, of Indonesia and whilst uh, holiday destinations like Bali have been um, or are part of an Australian um, you know, tourist destination. Um, there are absolutely other parts of Indonesia that I think we can encourage in terms of tourism. But on the, um, as I said, there are different ways that we can engage. I mean, we do a lot of work in the education space, potentially there's scope to increase that. We, we talk about uh, trade and whilst our trade levels with uh, Indonesia um, are substantial, there is opportunity for growing that relationship, particularly given where Indonesia is going economically. I mean, 
Indonesia will grow. Um, she is a um, large uh, country in, in terms of population, not so much in terms of land mass. But uh, these all afford opportunities for growing the relationship and for growing those connections. And I think once you grow those connections, it enables you to uh, change uh, perceptions uh, both ways. And, uh, and perhaps are there any challenges for the relationship given the changing world order at this stage or the, the uncertainties that are there that haven't been there? Well, we, we do, and this is clearly uh, something that emerged today uh, in very sharp focus. We are living in a changing world. We are living in a world where um, geopolitical issues uh, are very much uh, at the fore in our region. The Indo-Pacific region uh, is a very... Um, fast-growing region. It is a region that has um, certain challenges uh, and when we talk about the Indo-Pacific it is a large part of the globe. Interestingly of course Australia and Indonesia sit in the centre of that Indo-Pacific spectrum so that gives us the opportunity for engagement um, both um, horizontally and vertically. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, and uh, if you would like any further information about international affairs or events run by the AAA, please go to our website or follow us on Facebook.